everyone thanks for coming through to this video please do subscribe if you haven't already and click the like button and maybe even drop me a comment once you've watched it hope you enjoy we are going to draw a similar version of the picture above um i put that there just so you have some kind of reference however it's going to be slightly different it's going to be more wintry and snowy so yeah we're going to go for snowy wintry vibes okay so first of all i am going to have the sky part is going to be more gray with the blue um just because it's been snowing and then of course because of that we'll have to have more darker greens down the bottom because it's darker and there's not much light um and then we can decide where we want to put the snow i'm going to do the trees a little bit more central um a little bigger more of a focus rather than the foreground so let's go for it so first of all I'm going to squeeze out some of my carbon black whichever black you have they're all different names from different brands don't worry about it I'm going to squeeze out my whole load of white because I know I'm going to use it <laughs> um blue so we need I think we'll go for the ultramarine blue Hang on, doesn't want to come out. So we're going for ultramarine blue. I'll just make um, a watered down version of that using the white. We'll just give it a good tint. Um, I think that's all we need for the first part. Now we don't need to have a proper straight line on this one like we would if it was a seascape because the horizon is so flat. But here on the horizon, we are going to have um, some form of... Sorry about the washing machine. <laughs> i've got my kitchen door open so the cats can go in and out um we will have some kind of roughage here so let's get started just going to have a quick swig of my tea i think i'll put it that side so i don't dip my brushes in it easy done so you need a flat brush to start with um kind of the biggest one you've got i suppose because we're doing a big area now i do also do painting kits so if you do if you do buy the painting kits and you're following along it's the largest flat brush in your kit please excuse the washing machine it's nearly done okay sorry about that guys um now black is a very potent color when you mix it with anything else so but what i want to do is kind of get different variations of gray anyway so we've got kind of a nice dark grey there and now just with the grey that's on my brush I'm going to sweep a bit of white over here and we're just going to make a really pale sweep a bit more pale grey now we need quite a lot of it because it's the sky um so yeah and we can do lots of mixing when we're on here anyway we can mix it all in now I'm just going to get a bit of paint off there because we can always use that washing my brush off we're going to try and mix up some blue and then what we'll do is just mix the blues and the greys on the sky make it look all kind of just natural and blend it in let me just get my rag off the floor there we go right so we're going to get a bit of the blue and a bit of the white and as you can see again like the black it's the strongest color so we need to really have more white and just a little bit of the blue okay and keep going till you're happy with the color there now we can easily mix more of that if we need it i think i do want a bit more before we get started but as i say we can mix a lot more of that as we go along i'm not so sure we're going to need the dark dark gray but let's let's see how it goes so we want to mix in above i'm going to actually just spray the canvas they're quite dry these canvases if you do get this in the kit if you can spray it or just go over it with a water brush and just push the water around it will help um to do this first kind of layer we want it to be going on nice and smoothly and pushing around um i'm going to now mix in some of the gray as you can see just mixing in bits here and there because it's a gray blue sky and i don't really need too much of that dark that dark gray just going to get a bit and mix it in because we do want some dark areas because there we go that's nice 
it just gives that feeling of a grey but sunny day you know when it snows and it's all grey for a bit and then when it settles the sun comes out again I just want to kind of give it that kind of feel that vibe so again we're coming in with the grey so we're going to come about two thirds down because then the trees will be in front keep adding water to your brush if you're finding that the paint isn't moving around as you'd like it to it's really important to keep doing that hopefully you can see and there's not too much glare i've got the light coming mainly from this side so it does glare a bit there it's like a daylight lamp see if it's any good without no see it's gone very dark so sorry we'll just have to manage i'm just going to mix a bit more of that light blue try and get it to the same as i had before doesn't matter if it's not perfect see i've got a bit of the gray in there which is quite nice and we're just blending that up and down and now we are coming to the bottom we can be a little bit darker so i'm going to add in some of those darker blues we're going to get some more water because it's not going on the canvas very well if you feel what i say your brush is sticking to the canvas and you're getting patches here where the paint isn't filling in the canvas very well then um, you need water you need to kind of get it so it's spreading on really nicely right so as you can see we are a bit darker down the bottom so we come to the horizon line it will be darker there we go Think that looks nice we'll get some more gray mixed in there we go so it's just a nice beautiful blue sky I might come in with some of the darker up here actually it's only slightly darker isn't it just blend that in you don't need as i say you don't need a straight line here at the bottom I do want to come down a bit further i think because i've got to remember that the trees are going to take up a lot of the space we don't want just too much green land down here i'm running out of blue let's do some blue and gray mixed in there we go okay i'm happy with that so we're two thirds sky so that we can place the the trees oh i did not mean to pick up that black that was a bit of an accident so I'm just going to blend it out, see if I can get rid of it naturally. And I probably can. Yeah, it's just going to look like clouds. So we're just going across with a brush and just pushing it into the board and pushing into the other paint. So it just looks like great cloud and we've had a bit of a snowdrop. <laughs> but yeah, I caught it. I don't know if you saw, I caught it on the palette. I caught the dark black. And actually, we didn't really need too much of that dark grey at all, did we? okay so need to clean out the brushing and we're going to go for green down here so we need some phthalo blue i think we'll try that it can come out a bit aquary so we'll make a couple of greens and then i'll decide i like my mid yellow for doing the grass and what we may have to do to darken the green, this, I'm on the last of my yellow on that bottle, I'm trying to use it up. Um, we may have to darken it up once we've made it. Okay, so I think, yeah, I did think the phthalo green, see, it can tend to be a bit more aquary. So I'm just going to add ultramarine now and kind of just green, green it up. And we'll put some more yellow in and then it starts to make it look a bit more like a natural green. Okay, so we're using medium yellow and ultramarine blue again. Don't use the phthalo blue. Um, I realise my mistake. Right, so we're going to need quite a bit of that. We're going to need a lot of water. And we're just going to come along. And remember, it's the reason why I've done it this dark is because um, we, we haven't got a lot of light shining. Um, so it needs to be a nice dark green. Okay. And don't forget, we're going to be putting snow over it anyway, so don't worry too much. I'm going to add some more. I didn't make anywhere near enough. I made lots for the sky, didn't I? And then I didn't make enough for down here. 
I am hoping that the sound of the washing machine is going to be doled out when I play this back. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Right, I've got a pain in my right arm today, so bear with me. <clears throat> I may have to stop and start while I rest my arm. Feels like it's my frozen shoulder coming back. Has anyone had that? Oh, it's horrible. Get some more of the new mid yellow out because then I've got more to play around with. I can keep adding it. I won't add too much to my palette, don't want to waste it. We're being a bit careful. That's coming out nice. Oh, yes, I like that. It's an even better green than I had before. Because the yellow is slightly different, it has created um, a different green. But as you can see, like, I don't, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's like streaks of yellow in there. So I'm going to do that again. And then we've got some patches of lighter green as well. Let's add a little bit of white and just have some different patches of colour coming in. Just as you're going up. We don't want blue in there so much, but <laughs> don't worry if you get a bit of blue on there. I've just caught the end of it. Um, I think there's blue. We've made the green using the blue and I haven't mixed it in properly, so it was a just blue. There we go, more water. Now, when it comes to doing the shape, oh no, we've had a splatter incident. Just pick it off, it's fine. There we go. Um, when we come to do the bit here where we're joining the sky and the trees, it can be a bit lighter because, I mean, it is the daytime. But um, not too light. Coming back in with the darker green here, just because this is where we're going to create the hump in the middle where the trees are, because they are on a little bit of a hump. And I'm going to start to create a bit of an edge here that joins the sky, and we're going to do it really wobbly because this is hedges and grass and trees. Unlike a seascape, there's no flat horizon. It's going to get a bit more water and still using my flat brush for this. We don't need to change brushes. This is perfectly adequate for this. Um, seems to be getting a bit lighter. I don't want that. There we go. And just keep bringing that round until that side kind of roughly needs to be the same height okay so by just coming in and creating different strokes of that green I think I might just blend in a bit of a lighter green now so I'm going to make that green a little bit lighter and we can come in and just create like some little waves and patterns and I decided to come up there a bit I am going to darken it again in a bit I think there we go so it just kind of gives that feeling of waves depending on how much snow you decide to put on your grass anyway you're probably not really going to see much of this anyway it just depends we haven't got that far yet and I haven't even decided how much I'm going to put on so let's just see how it goes right so make some more of that green keeping it dark this time as dark as i can make sure it's yellowed enough if the green is a greeny blue then you haven't put enough yellow in if it's a yellowy green you haven't put enough blue in but it depends what you're looking for you might want that so depending on what color you want I think this needs to come up a bit more for our hill. That's better. That's better. We can kind of make it trail off a little bit. There we go. And so just blend any other colours on your brush down. Basically let the paint work for you. Yeah, we're not doing a realist 
realism in painting it's kind of quick beginner painting semi-abstract so you don't have to worry about every little detail you just got to enjoy it now we had a problem in the sky up there where i dropped a dribble of green so we are going to go back to that and just kind of put it right there we go right I'm going to go, I'm going to pause now and I'll just get some clean water and we'll start the next step. Okay, for this next bit, we are going to do the trees. So to start with, we are going to use the big brush just to mix. If you've got the kit, use the straight brush, use whatever brush you want to use to mix or a palette knife if you haven't got the kit. So we're going to pull out some brown, pull out some black. And we were basically going for quite a dark brown here. Okay, that's a bit too red. So we want to come back in with some of the black. Don't see Anna is a very red brown. But that's okay, that's nice. I'm just going to come in with a bit of white to kind of chocolate it up a bit, <laughs> if you know what I mean. There we go. We're just taking some of the red out, adding that tint. Okay. So we don't need the big brush for this because we are going to do kind of like just um, a load of tree stumps. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to pick up using the angled brush if you have the kit or your angled brush. Don't worry about the size, whatever feels comfortable to you, whatever, whatever it is you have. And we're just going to come down and create some shapes. That looks a bit like trees we won't be leaving them like this don't worry they're not just going to be random sticks we're going to do some thin ones maybe in the background and then we can come and do some slightly thicker ones okay um it comes out quite quite far these are actually if you look them up they're called the nearly there trees or the nearly home trees now what i am going to do is also bring some shadow down onto that green so we're just putting a little bit of that brown onto the green the green isn't quite dry so it's blending in a little bit which is absolutely fine okay so we've created a bit of a shadow there where the trees are um i do actually want to still come up quite high with these they are pretty much all the same height um, and i think it's good what we can do now is maybe have some in the background that are actually like a really dark green so i'm gonna put down my ultramarine blue as before with my medium yellow I'll create a nice dark green Try and make sure it's mixed properly so there's no blue on its own or yellow on its own. It needs to be properly mixed in. And then I think what we'll do is we'll go over the tree trunks a little bit, greenify them up. And we'll also create a few more tree trunks, kind of just green in the background. Just fine little lines. So I'm just pulling up and then we can start thinking about... Just make sure it looks busy, is all I'm going to say. Particularly at the bottom, because the tree trunks are going to be a bit thicker. We could actually just bring up some paint like that. And it kind of just blends them together a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> okay. For the next bit, we are... I'm going to paint the trees really roughly and loosely using our dark green we're just gonna paint the tops of the trees all kind of bunched together because well that is generally how they look <laughs> it's very difficult to decipher between the trees so we're going to just put a range of value of greens and browns on because it is autumn We've got a nice autumn sky, so we need nice autumn coloured trees. We could even pop a bit of brown into the green and create a really nice brown green. That's nice. Slightly different kind of feel to it. There we go, you can see there that 
but it's slightly different and we're just still just using our angle brush just working our way around we don't want it to be too flat that's the problem with the angle brush so you need to come back and make sure it's you know it's got little bits kinking out here and there and yeah it just have fun with it <laughs> so but again we're trying to make sure the colors are as autumn as possible let's come back with just some of that dark green and this time although it is dark green we're keeping it a bit lighter than it was and there and now we're just basically layering we're just putting shapes in and layering our tree so we are just having fun there we go just looking now to see if there's anywhere else I kind of we can put a bit here down here coming down yeah a few wispy bits and i think that's pretty much it now what we're going to have to do is dry this off and then do any finishings on the background that we feel we want to do i'm quite happy with it how it is but i might feel differently once i've dried it because the colors do change slightly so i'm going to do that first quickly okay so i'm pretty sure that's dry everywhere good we're going to keep hold of the angle brush that you have and we're going to come in with the dark kind of brownie green that we made just mix a little bit more of that up and i think i just want to bring that in to the bottom so we're going to come in in stripes but then we're just going to blend it above the top and the bottom and then that just creates just another value of green which creates the depth in our image so i'm going to move that so you can see that if i put it flat and i think let's just just put it anywhere really just kind of blend it in gently in little wisps here and there and it does create the feel of kind of depth depth and, and, and variations in color let's make some more up because we're running out we need some more yellow hmm. surprised how much yellow i needed okay so we're going to mix up that dark green again making sure it's not too blue or not too green not too yellow sorry and then we're gonna come and get some of this chocolate i need some water to be able to pick it up the chocolate brown and then we're gonna come back in on the painting with a few patches of that i think maybe i need to make add a bit more green so we'll mix it in and make it as we go because we don't want it to be green too green or too brown somewhere in between and it's just finding that right i think i'm happy with that so i want to come in and just blend a bit more down here put some patches in of darker color and we're just flicking our brush 
don't know if you can see I'm just kind of flicking it across so, as you can see oh picked up blue there do not want to do that mix it in it's the phalo blue though so it might mess it up let's just see that's all right it's just created another variation it's fine we can actually be much darker down here as well anyway as we come to the very foreground i actually want quite a bit of that dark in right hopefully you can see that's it on the flat so you can see there's quite a bit of depth in the color now variations might just put a little bit over here and kind of have it coming around like that so we're creating that hill effect blend it in though we don't want it to stick out too much and maybe a bit more here although it's quite dark there remember water if you need it and I'm just going to come in again underneath the trees and just we're just making sure there's a lot of variation in the colors and that's what makes it realistic okay so i shall pause you quickly while i dry this time i forgot to pause before okay drying done by the way for drying you just you can just use um the hair dryer i use a heat tool like a craft heat tool but a hair dryer is just fine and i just kind of gently tap to make sure everything feels dry so the tree wasn't dry so let's just smudge that green back in there we go she says doing more <laughs> there we are i'm always adding and changing right okay so to start with we are going to um i don't want to put too much snow on because we don't want to ruin the entire picture we're just going to put some gray white yep so we've got some gray white here um in order to have white on later as a highlight we need to have something a little bit darker so we're going to fill our round brush and we're obviously going to come to the top parts of our tree um, and just come round and dot the snow wherever you want it now this is not white this is the pale grey because what we'll do is go on top of that with white and then it creates shadow and depth so you might want a lot more at the top and then just wiggle your brush around to create snow markings there's obviously quite a bit in the middle there why not and then you can even use your point there's a smaller round brush in the kit or use your smaller round brush if you have your own and just dot bits on which i think we will do towards the end at the moment we just really want to come in and pop down see that was a white there you saw how much lighter that was i'm going to gray that up a bit first okay and we're just dotting it round please don't do like equal amounts everywhere it's got to be it's got to look just kind of thrown on and we can have a couple of little specks on the tree stumps that's fine and then we definitely need to have it now we won't be under the tree so much but it will be here okay now how much snow you want to put on the ground is up to you obviously we're going to need some because it's on the trees so we need to have it dotted everywhere else now for this i am doing some bigger blobs and we'll come in and we're going to tap in some smaller bits after okay so this is just giving us an idea that oh there's some snow here yeah we don't have to go crazy we can still see the grass underneath But this is our nice snowy version of this picture i'm just going to pause one minute the door has okay so 
we're just going to carry on putting wriggles of snow in just anywhere doesn't matter where um, and remember it's just grey to start with because we'll come in with the white afterwards you need to have the shadow of the grey first in order to come in and lighten it up after so we can have some quite thick patches here and there that's fine and just kind of wriggle it down and then you can have much bigger patches in the foreground and we'll come in with a lot more grey dark grey we can have some dark grey down here for the snow and all I'm doing all I'm doing literally is just wiggling my brush around just wiggling it we don't want any um, equal patterns we want it to be all over the place so just have fun with it this is the joy of painting snow it's kind of just everywhere and then we get smaller as we go back um, and just have little patches where it's really light as well like that okay still going so we're at the we're probably right now at the what i would say is the messy stage i need some more grey mixed into that some more black to make it a bit darker i was coming into white again there you can see how much lighter that one is okay so we're just wiggling it in And the, as I say, the bits in the foreground are always going to be a bit bigger because they're nearer, so we can see the bigger patches. And there. Hope you're enjoying this. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell to hear of any new ones. And if there's anything you'd like to see me paint, please do pop in a request. I am still a relatively new channel, so... It would be great if you could also share. But anything you can do to help the algorithm is much appreciated. And I'm just very, very grateful for you being here and watching. Okay. So, now we've got all that grey round down. I think in the foreground I want to pop a few kind of what we would call low lights so we want to come in with our darkest range of color so i'm going to mix in some more of the black with that gray and we're going to darken it up so i did need that dark gray after all i got rid of the bit we mixed up okay and we just need to bring that in because that will show the shadow in the snow the darkest bits the bits that's sunken into the grass more and that will help to you'll see in a minute when we do do the whites of the snow it will help to make it pop because we've got those darker bits in as well yeah, i'm just putting it where all over not really worrying too much not thinking too much try not to think just do dotting it around so there's it's kind of even around but again i am not doing it perfectly straight anywhere just we're just doing it to create the shadow of snow i absolutely love doing winter pictures last year i did a whole load of um christmas themed things but it was only the start of my channel when i did that so they are there somewhere if you search for them. Um, but initially I was just doing these little A5 pictures that you could do in your sketchbook. So that's, they are more restricted in that way. Whereas now doing these on the big canvases and I'm making paint on kits. So please do check out. I will probably add on some of my painting kits to the video if you've seen that okay so there we've got quite a few bits of shadow in. i'm just going to break up that bit there so we don't need that okay 
now we come in with our highlights um i think we've got a bit too much of a straight line there before we do that to be honest so i'm going to come in with that dark gray um that's not very dark gray that's more like white i want to go for that mid gray well that's okay that's what i wanted i wanted to start to um break up that straight line a bit it looked a bit straight there where it was darker so that's better i'm happy with that okay and um, because maybe that's higher up that's why there's less snow bits of it have melted in the sun i think that's probably a good way to think about it and of course there won't be much under the trees because it would have fallen on the trees and then there won't be much down there but what i am going to do with the white we're coming in with a white now and i'm just using the point okay because it is very strong and you see how that now really pops out because we've laid the foundation of the darker shades of grey. We can now really focus on where we want it to pop. So I'm going to do some dots around here. And it literally is just dotting it in. I'm going to do, of course, we need lots up in the trees. But because it's the white, I'm just keeping the, the point of my brush. I'm just doing it with that. I don't want to do too many big blobs because what we can do then is overwhelm the picture. So just keep a little bit on the end of your brush. And we're just blobbing, really. Try not to do equal amounts of blobbing. Try not to keep it all in one area. Just make it haphazard. And we can have a nice big white blobby bit there. Let's get some white bits on the ends here. That would look pretty. Yeah, we'll get some right on the ends. Okay. Remember, we're not doing realism. This is fun. It's meant you're meant to enjoy it. So don't worry too much as you're going along. Please have fun. This is the point of what we're doing. Art for joy art for mindfulness art for a quiet mind that's why we're doing it right we're coming in now with some more pronounced bits of white let's get those in what a nice christmasy feel so for those of you that have come from my socials and you are looking at this from the point of Cornwall and this is the nearly there trees adapted for a snowy snowy winter and this could actually you could do this and you could take a photo of it and you could print it and you could make Christmas cards out of it um, you could make tags out of it now, or you could take a photo and print it off and give prints to your friends in frames or your family. I'm sure they would love it. Okay, so just dotting that around. As you can see, it's really standing out that white now because we have the shadow of the grey in the background. And that's fine. I realised I did a big blob there, but it doesn't matter. Snow is haphazard, isn't it? falls where it falls and then once it starts to melt away it's just there in patches isn't it so that's kind of the look I'm going for the patchy stage so we can still see a bit underneath and as you can see it doesn't actually take too long to do the snow covered bit I think some people think that it takes a bit longer. It's it's actually really quick. If you just if you try not to think about it too much and you're just there wiggling your brush about. Just having fun, being creative, don't think too much and all of a sudden you've done your snow. So um I would love to hear from anyone that's watching this. I would love to know who you are, where you're from, um, what sort of level you are at learning to paint, what sort of stage you're at, are you just starting? Love to hear from you. Especially as I'm a new channel, and I'd like to build up a little bit of a community. 
I know there's a lot of art channels out there, a lot, but hopefully you'll see something in mine that you'll like. Purposefully don't put any kind of music on in the background because then whilst you're watching me, you can put your own music on and decide um, what you want to listen to. It doesn't have to be anything that I've chosen. It does mean the video is quite quiet because it is just me. But obviously you can change that by adding your music in. Right. Kind of coming with quite a bit of white at the bottom and, and coming up. And some nice thick patches here. Just to give it a bit of dimension and a feel that it's going backwards. Yeah, so we can feel all these thick bits here, but then it's getting a bit smaller as we're going away. I think that's I think that's right anyway when you're not looking from a reference photo you've got to kind of imagine it in your head and I think that's how I'm imagining it <laughs> okay so now we're going to do splashes so just get your another brush and we're going to get lots of white and we're going to splash by adding quite a bit of water because it won't splash otherwise it won't want to come off your brush so make a nice watery mixture of that white not too watery otherwise it will be too much like um, watercolour but then you don't want like I just had them when I experimented you don't want lines of white you want droplets so for that you need a lot of water so we're getting there I think a bit more and then I think we might be done so now what we can do is just sprinkle snow everywhere so it's still snowing a little bit but not not drastically heavily it's kind of after the after the snow cover when you just have little bits coming in now you can see that some of them are landing as bigger blobs than others and that's okay and you might want to have just quite a bit more here at the bottom there we go that's a big blob but it doesn't matter i'm putting bits in front of the trees as well so i'm just going to mix a little bit more up because we're using it up quite quickly mix that in get some more water make sure it is lovely and fluid there we go and then you'll get with some really good i'm trying to be careful at the top edge because my keyboard's there and i'm splashing it <laughs> but you don't have to worry about that when you do yours don't do with me don't have your keyboard right next to it right now we're going to come over the trees we're going to come over kind of comes in different directions as well because we can get some of those strips of paint and i do kind of love that but yeah so we're just going to go for it and cover it in snow lovely well i'm having fun hopefully when you get around to doing it you'll have fun too now there is something else we can do if we want to we can give the painting a little bit of sparkle i am just going to remove that one big dot there it's the only dot that i'm not appreciating so i'm just going to lift it up okay that's fine if you do it while it's still wet I'll be fine no one will know that it's there what I'll do is I'll quickly just sprinkle a bit more there where I've lifted it from and then it will cover it up there we go I need a few more up here it feels like it's a bit empty 
just try to be careful and I just try to put a few down at a time because once you put lots down you can't take it off really okay happy with that so let's think so yes I was going to say you can add some sparkle you could add some um silver pen or some silver paint whatever you can get your hands on I have this um liquid leaf silver I have to give it a good shake now I tend to be careful and only use old brushes with this because it doesn't tend to come off the brushes very easily so you could use something um it just has a point on it like a cocktail stick just dip it in and dip it out again um I'm going to find an old brush yes got one okay so this is silver leaf liquid leaf um and although you won't immediately see it's there can you see little bits there um it will give a little shine to it let's do some bigger blobs here we'll dot that around and it will shimmer in the light can you see that? Let's, let's get the light whoops i just smudged some on there moving it oh what i like i'll have to come over that again after okay so just pop it around wherever you feel and then when the light hits it it will have some nice little silver patches you could just use like your silver craft pens or if you have some silver paint do that but yeah it's just a nice little added touch it's not something you have to do or you don't need it um there's always glitter glue as well put some glitter on that would be fun okay so do it how you want to do it mm. so difficult to get that silver leaf out you literally have to pull it off <laughs> otherwise it ruins the brushes but it's okay it's an old brush right so um i do need to finish off my mistake there which is fine let's put that right so um, just need to wet my brush and get some blue and mix it in with the white make it nice and pale Hopefully you won't even know that I've been there. There, I think we're done. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, give give yours a little squiggle, um, a signature, so that we know it's yours. I shall do mine in a minute when I've found the pens. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming by. It's so much appreciated. Take care, everyone so uh i just wanted to add on a bit to the video because um i kind of felt it needed something else like there was something missing and i think we just need to maybe have some birds in the sky um just just kind of hovering around the trees and of course to do that really i think that's not even am i going to be able to make that come to life again that gray no i don't think so right so i'm going to make a little bit more gray kind of a darker grey we don't want it to be too light and we're just going to do some little bird shapes in the sky that's it just some little blobs like that and it looks like um, from a distance it just looks like birds hovering in the sky um, we want to kind of have a little group of them like that that's quite nice i'm just using the tip of my brush and i'm just doing those shapes um in the distance we could have some more a bit lower down it's too much on my brush and i haven't got much of a point so let's try and make sure we've got that nice point 
Okay. You kind of don't want it to be V-shaped. You kind of want it to be curling out a bit because if it's too straight V-shaped, it won't look natural. And of course, we don't want just perfect little straight lines of birds. We want little groups, little clusters of them with maybe a few around the edge. And you can put them wherever you want to put them. I'm going to do a few quite close together over there. And now I'm saying finished. So <laughs> there was something missing. It wasn't quite right and I couldn't figure out. And I think it was as simple as just adding in some birds. So I am actually stopping now. <laughs>